So Vishojo recently debuted this new VTuber, Henya. Henya the Genius. You can see her right here if you haven't seen her yet over at Henya the Genius on Twitter. Before her debut, people were speculating if it could be Pikami. And after her debut, as you can see, people are sort of hinting that it is Pikami. Sometimes people are outright saying that it is. And over on Twitter, this has caused a bit of a scene. Many Twitter users now taking the opportunity to mention the Hogwarts Legacy situation that occurred a number of months back and saying that it had nothing to do with Pikami graduating at all. Here's one such tweet. We'll take a look at many more examples in this video, just giving you a brief overview of the situation before we move on. And before we move on, let's play some of those clips from Henya's debut so you can hear her for yourself. I have one more announcement. My merch! <laughs> My merch is coming <laughs> from now on. So, very familiar voice, and the way she says Dayo and reacts to it, it seems reasonable to say that uh, it's basically as close as she'll probably come to confirming that she's Pikami without outright saying it, but let me know what you think in the comments. Dayo. <laughs> Let us change it a little bit, Pika. Cool story, Dayo. <laughs> and so with Pikami's apparent return as Henya, a lot of people are now talking about all of the recent occurrences over at V Shoujo. And people are also apparently bringing up the Hogwarts Legacy stuff all over again, which I showed you one example of earlier in the video. Let's continue on with that discussion now because it's become quite a thing over on Twitter. Simply typing in Pikami on Twitter will get you some interesting responses. This one, for example, with over 1,300 likes, quote retweeting the Vishojo announcement for Henya, saying, y'all got so freaking furious at trans people for making Pikami graduate when she was literally just chasing the bag. The game had nothing to do with it. A response from Etnali saying, still doesn't excuse how terrible people were to her over it. To which the OP responds saying, the hate was dwarfed by the positive wave people threw at her. A few single digit Twitter accounts posting stupid stuff drowned by everyone. So this is a terrible take, like really bad logic. Like I'm actually really surprised that people are liking this and or that this take was even made at all because this would apply the same logic could be applied to so many things and it just makes the OP look awful. For example, Let's say there's a child who was assaulted by adults, robbed, beaten, assaulted, whatever you want to say. You could take it further, make it even worse example if you want. And let's say that eventually that news got released to the public and the public crowdsourced money to pay for that child's medical expenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? The logic that the OP is using here would then say, well, it's not a big deal what happened to that child because they have more support. That is such a bad take, dude. Oh my gosh. And as this person would also point out, other flaws in that argument, it was more than just a few people. And there were some pretty big accounts also signal boosting really uh, negative stuff about Pikami. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of issues with that take. I just pointed out what was uh, one of the most glaring issues in my opinion. Continuing. They still harassed her, and this isn't me being transphobic, I'm just stating that she was 100% harassed. OP saying y'all keep saying this as if it was some mass hysterical level harassment when single digit follower accounts got drowned out by people who actually matter, who spammed her with love. Oh, it's like the same argument from the other take, basically. Person's like memeing back to the OP in a way, let's read this one. I heard your dad actually got hit by a truck and reincarnated into an Isekai hair in fantasy world, so it doesn't matter at all that I shot him three times first. Literally your argument. Another response to the OP, sorry, you're not going to gaslight and excuse what you did. Here's another example in a tweet with over 1,000 likes saying, So Henya just debuted for V Shoujo, and it's literally just Pikami, which means the entire Hogwarts fiasco had literally no effect on Pikami graduating at all, like sane people assumed. Great. The OP then adding this, all, all this to say trans rights are human rights, and no matter what kind of BS internet drama has happened, does got give you an excuse to threaten people on the internet. The OP locked comments, but we can take a look at the quote tweets. So let's do that. Here we go. First quote tweet reads, trans rights are human rights and trans responsibilities are human responsibilities, like the responsibility to not send death threats to someone over a video game. If you can't admit that your side has some really bad apples, you lose the privilege to call out other sides. It is interesting because there were some trans people calling out like the trans extremists and the freaking like allies were being all weird saying awful stuff about Pikami. And like I said, some trans people were actually calling that stuff out back during the Hogwarts legacy situation, which was cool to see. But then you have some people who are incapable of admitting any sort of fault 
or flaw at all, which is just odd and actually a part of a larger issue in the LGBT community, but we're not going to be getting further into that topic in this segment. So let's continue. This quote retweet making some bold claims about Pikami and Pikami's fans essentially, and right below that, someone asking what trans rights are being violated basically. Virgil saying exactly trans people stop bullying and threatening people on the internet, and literally Soup saying the people that threaten someone for playing a game over the internet. Showing an image, you know, from that the, the OP said here does not give an excuse to threaten people on the internet, basically saying take your own advice, I think. So yeah, as you can clearly see, if you type Pikami on Twitter right now, it's uh it's a bit of a thing, to, to, to put it simply. I'm getting kind of tired of reading, though. I'm going to have TTS take over while I sit here with you guys and have a coffee. Let's take a look. So, like, it's confirmed she's picking me. This means, as usual, the transphobes were wrong. It had nothing to do with HL. She was in discussions for a better contract. Almost as if stuff happens behind the scenes people don't know about and blaming one group is stupid. Pikami is trending now, and all I see is the trans community using it to try to justify their actions. LMAO now, Twitter freaks. Just because your attempts at ruining her life failed, it doesn't mean your actions are suddenly excused. You are just as disgusting as yesterday. Now that Pikami is back under a different name we get the usual song and dance of people who tried to bully someone out of public life whining that they shouldn't suffer consequences because they failed. Otherwise known as the cancel culture doesn't exist routine. Pikami didn't return. That will never happen. To all the Twitter freaks justifying the harassment because of the new Shoujo debut. Well, guess what? You didn't learn anything at all. You are hellbent on making your community the most hated one on the net. Hashtag Pikami just a news flash for all the Twitter freaks acting out. One, literally like everyone besides actual transphobes were blaming the activists, not trans PPL2, even if she was already planning to graduate. The harassment clearly sped up the process stop playing victim. For absolutely no reason, I'd like to remind folks that both Voms and Vjubas outside the company who were close to her confirmed Pikami's graduation was planned long before the Wizard game stuff happened. Pikami is back. Let's go. This is what Twitter freaks get for bullying her and dictating what she has to play. Welcome to Shoujo, Pikami or should I say Hinya, never give up. So. All the transphobes that wanted to go to war against us trans people cues they swore that Pikami left cues of Hogwarts Legacy can shut up cues they were dead wrong. It was as simple as Fsho offered her a bigger bag and more freedom and she took it. People pointing out the harsh truth that the trans community did viciously harass Pikami and accused her of being a map, all because of the Harry Potter game, does not make them transphobes. Nice projection. The first thing you guys did when she came back was trying to use it to absolve yourselves of all the harassment you put her through. No, Twitter freak. That's like saying you're not at fault for driving someone to suicide, because your victim's attempt failed, and they got help. It still happened, and you are still awful people. So yeah, as you can see, Twitter is pretty chaotic right now. A lot of heated discussions going on with this recent news about Pikami. Or should I say, Henya. What, Henya the genius, there we go. Ultimately, I just hope Pikami is happy with her decision and it all works out real, real well. And thanks for being cool about TTS too. I was just like really not in the mood and too lazy to read all that today. It's Mother's Day, it's Sunday. I'm like, let me just read more than half of it, but for the latter part of the segment, I'll just automate the rest. So now we'll wrap it up. As always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your understanding. I'll see you in the comments and tomorrow for the next segment. And I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday as well and a great Mother's Day too. Thanks again and see you in the next one.